Welcome back. Our final guest of the day is Chet Haas, whom you already know if you're an Android developer, though you might not know that he's also the author of Round and Holy, an homage to donuts. Chet, welcome to the show. Thanks. <laughs> so we already talked with Dan Galpin about all the announcements that were in the keynote. Okay. So I'm hoping that we can go kind of more big picture. Is that okay? You're saying, you're saying fast forward, don't talk about that stuff. We already heard it. You're boring me. That's what I'm hearing. I, I mean, I wouldn't have put it that way. Okay. Anyway, uh, Kotlin first. Kotlin first. What, is, what does that mean? And sort of like, how do we get here and what does it mean for developers moving forward? Sure. And remember, so, big picture. Big picture. So the big <laughs> picture is, we announced Kotlin a couple of years ago. It turns out people really like it. Well, a lot good. of developers really liked it at that time anyway. What we announced was, yeah, we understand you like it and we're going to support it as an official language. So it's a good thing. So people continued to use it more and more. We agree with everyone, they should be using it more and more. And now we want to invest in it more and more uh, yeah. and offer more capabilities for them to use it more and more. <laughs> Do you like that phrase? I like it a lot, I'm using it a lot. So let me give you a couple of examples. Yeah. So we have this set of APIs called Jetpack and increasing a lot of the stuff that we're doing in Jetpack instead of including some of the stuff that's coming out at IO is going to be coming out first with Kotlin capabilities, things like coroutine integration into uh, Room, also coroutine deep integration into Lifecycle and Live Data and make things easier. Uh, Kotlin only, or Kotlin first libraries like the new Jetpack Compose that we just announced we're gonna be developing in the open today. Um, so we're gonna be doing much more Kotlin stuff for Kotlin developers outside of Android as well. Uh, we're also investing in more training and docs and sample code, uh, things like See, with JetBrains, we're doing Kotlin everywhere. It's this global series of events, conference-type educational events. Uh, there's also a new Udacity course. I think it's developing Android applications with Kotlin. Just launched all of those uh, episodes in that course. So just a lot more training in general to help people learn and use Kotlin more because we think they should be doing that. I think one of the interesting discoveries I made the other day is that there are developers now that started as Kotlin Android developers. That blows my mind. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is, anyway, that's cool. Uh, you've been on Android for a while now. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, I was supposed to fill that in. So I joined actually nine years ago this nine month. Nine years. Okay. Yeah. So 2010. Sometime. Uh, in that time, um, you've, I'm sure, had a really unique perspective on everything that's happened in the developer space for Android. So uh, here's two relatively specific questions for you. One, what's something that's super exceptional that you didn't expect when you started working on Android? And what's something that you still want to make better after all, right. all this time? So super exceptional, uh, there's a bunch of things to choose from. There's all kinds of interesting features and development software is cool because new stuff happens all the time. I'm going to pick Jetpack because, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel very close to this because a lot of that work was coming out of the team uh, that I was working with, the toolkit team, where we had all these capabilities in the support library. Uh, worst thing about the support library, we called it support library, but it was actually a plural set of libraries. So even the naming of it was messed up, right? So we had app compat, and then we had like specific utilities, yeah. recycler view was in there, like all it these different of things. It was a sandbox of stuff, all very useful. What we're doing with Jetpack is sort of putting it together into cohesive parts, right? So there are these modules that you can use either together or separately. We're shipping it in a more robust and predictable manner. Like we made sense out of the APIs. We refactored it with a namespace that made sense. Like we took a lot of the capabilities that we had and we put it into a more sensible form yeah. that solves one of the biggest problems with Android for developers, which is how do I develop for multiple versions of Android? Because that is the developer reality. Right, so the ability to actually write to a single API and have it work on, on releases all the way back to API 14 right now, um, I think is huge. And, and for us to be able to do that in a way where they can make sense out of those APIs and the documentation and the Maven artifacts that they, they have to get, I think is really huge. Um, what, what was the other question? Something that you still want to make better. Everything, I want to make everything better. This is software, we have bugs, we have features we want to work on, we have APIs that we regret because that's how APIs work. Yeah. Um, so honestly, everything can get better all the time. I feel good about where we're at, especially given where we were coming from, uh, but I also feel like we have a lot further to go. Okay, that's fair. All right, so your Twitter profile, 
which I looked at recently. It must be in, the truth. On research for this interview. <laughs> uh, it says you're the lead um, for the Android UI toolkit. Yes. So what's yes. that like? So the first thing that tells me is that I need to go update my Twitter profile. This because, is my subtle way of saying yes. that. <laughs> uh, it is out of date. So I was the lead for the Android UI toolkit team. So when I joined in 2010, I joined the UI toolkit team. I worked on animations and graphics and performance and UI stuff and eventually managed the team for about the last five years as the team was growing, doing yeah. things like Jetpack and architecture components and, and all the normal platform toolkit stuff. Uh, and then about three months ago, I made a change and moved to, uh, it's a team called Developer Relations. I don't know oh, if you know what I've that is. I've heard of them. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I made that switch, uh, dropped all my management responsibilities on the floor, and I'm now a developer advocate in, in DevRel. Well, that's great. I think so. Welcome to the light side or dark side? I consider it the light side because okay. you know what? New jobs always look better, <laughs> and then they become old jobs. Well, let's hope this one stays the light side for some time. No, I'm excited about it. So the way I look at the job change is I now get to do my hobby as my real job. I was doing <laughs> DevRel stuff. Don't I was doing a bunch of camera. outreach. Don't tell them. Why? <laughs> Don't, my bosses won't watch it. It doesn't matter. Uh, but I've been doing DevRel since I got here, right? I really love doing yeah, outreach stuff with developers. But I always felt guilty about that because that wasn't actually my day job. And now it is. Now it is. You're welcome, world. <laughs> OK. Uh, something else that you do that I want to mention is the ADB podcast, yes. the Android Developers Backstage. Yes. So for the handful of people watching that haven't subscribed to that podcast Wait, what? Yet, it could be a couple. What episode is your favorite that you should, uh, that they should start with? Okay, I'm gonna start by saying they are all my children <laughs> and <laughs> there is no favorite among them. Uh -huh. But if I had to pick, I would go way back in the archives to back when our audio quality, frankly, was very poor. So you're gonna have to suffer through it. It's gonna sound like one of those 1930s, you know, just past the talky transition movies. Uh, but we talked to Anwar uh, who was at that time managing the art team. We talked to him about how garbage collectors work. And it was so fascinating. So my favorite thing about doing ADB is we get to learn how stuff works. We are not talking to people about stuff that we know. We're talking about stuff that we don't by definition. Like, oh, I'd like to learn more about Treble or art or Android Studio or performance or whatever. We grab people on the team that know more about that stuff yeah. and we have a conversation with them. So we had a conversation with Anwar and we were so interested that our little 45 minute episode stretched onto an hour and a half before we ran out of words and we cut it into two episodes. So probably my favorite because it best represents the, oh my gosh, do we get into the details part. Okay. The art episodes. Z Art episodes. Art There's episodes. two. It's like 30s, somewhere in the 30s. And we're now at 112. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining us, Chet. Thank you.